welcome to the lecture board and as i said before we're going to be talking about the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis as well as the light independent reactions in the thylakoids we have photosystems and as i said before the photosystems are the light harvesting machines we have photosystem one and photosystem two now, photosystem 1 accepts light at 700 nanometers, and it is located in the outer tylocoid membrane. We have photosystem 2, which accepts light at 680 nanometers, and it's located in the inner thylakoid membrane. The process begins at photosystem 2 reaction center, and we can see it here where the arrow is pointing. Now, a photon will come down from the light energy from the sun or any other energy source right and it will excite the chlorophyll molecule in the reaction center at p680 there which also will cause it to want an electron right the reaction center will get this electron from the reaction at the bottom of the diagram there where water is split into protons which are hydrogen ions electrons and also oxygen and oxygen is going to be given off later as a byproduct of photosynthesis but we need the electrons here so the electron is obtained from the reaction right and it goes to the reaction center right because it's excited so it needs an electron now this electron because it's excited it's gonna move to an higher energy level right at the top there where you see 4e and it's going to be accepted by an electron acceptor there, right? And this is the first requirement for the light independent reaction. Now let's move over to the second photosystem, which is photosystem one. Same thing happens again. A photon from light energy from the sun or any other source is going to hit the chlorophyll molecule and it's going to cause it to become excited. And because of this excitation, it's going to absorb that electron coming in from photosystem 2. And the same thing happens again. It's going to become excited and move to another energy level, right? It goes higher as the arrow is showing. The photosystem is going to become electron deficient again. I get this electron to satisfy this deficiency from the adjacent photosystem 2, which had the electron coming down in the electron transport stage. It's going to move to protein complexes and the major one is ferrodoxin right and as it goes down it's going to meet nadp reductase right now the nadp reductase is going to combine the electrons with nadp to form nadph so now we have atp and we have nadph right and we are definitely going to see how we need these in the light independent reaction. Now, in the first process of excitation in photosystem 2, it is called photophosphorylation. And this is so because we use the energy from light to convert ADP to ATP. Now, in cyclic photophosphorylation, specifically in P700, the electrons are recycled. So they go back down to the reaction center after being passed through the electron transport chain. And in non-cyclic, the electrons move in a non-cyclic fashion. They are not recycled. They are actually reduced. And from what I just show you, we could see that this would use two photosystems photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Now, it is important for you to familiarize yourself with the differences between cyclic and non-cyclic um, photophosphorylation for your examination. And I have summarized this into a table so you can go ahead and read it. So from the light dependent reactions, we made two important molecules. We made ATP and we made NADPH. And we're going to need ATP's energy power and NADPH reducing power to fix carbon dioxide into sugars. Now, the light independent stage or the light independent um, reactions, they occur in the stroma. And the whole process 
is called the Calvin cycle. So it's a cycle. Um, there are basically three steps. There is carboxylation of ribulose biphosphate, reduction of glycerate 3-phosphate, and the regeneration of ribulose biphosphate. All right, let's start with the carboxylation of ribulose by phosphate. And carboxylation just means that we're going to add carbon dioxide to a molecule, right? So there's an enzyme present in the stroma called ribulose 1 5 biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase or Rubisco. Now, this enzyme, Rubisco, is responsible for catalyzing the reaction of carbon dioxide with ribulose 1, 5, which is the corresponding 5 carbon sugar. Now, this compound is going to split into half to form 3 phosphoglycerates or 3 PGA molecules. All right, let's move over to the reduction of glycerate 3 phosphate. This is specifically ATP and NADPH powered. And what we're going to have is an enzyme called glycerhaldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. It's going to catalyze the reduction. We're going to reduce the sugar of the 1 3 BPGA um, from the fixation process. Now, lastly, we have regeneration of ribulose by phosphate. It is important to note from this whole Calvin cycle that each turn of the Calvin cycle fixes one carbon. And the actual sugar product is not glucose. It is actually the three carbon sugar, right? And it, will, it can later combine to form glucose. But that is the product. And for the net synthesis of the, the phosphoglyceraldehyde molecule, which is the sugar, the cycle must take place three times, fixing three molecules of carbon dioxide. And to make one glucose molecule, we we'll require six cycles and a fixation of six carbon dioxide molecules. Now let's go to work some past papers that have photosynthesis questions in it. All right, this is our first paper that we're going to start off with today. And this is actually the 2012 CSET biology paper, right? And it's showing a diagram of a typical plant cell. And it's asking us to identify A and B as well as to state their functions. So we could say A is the cell wall and B is the chloroplast. And we know that the cell wall functions in protecting the cell membrane as well as providing structural support and protection for the plant cells against um, pressure and osmotic stress and so on. Chloroplast, right, is the site for photosynthesis. It has chlorophyll, which traps the light energy to fix the CO2 and the water into glucose, right? That's four marks. So it it's not a lot of things that you have to elaborate on. Let's move over to B. And B says, the cell in figure three was left in a concentrated salt solution for one hour. In the space below, draw an annotated diagram to show the appearance of this plant cell after one hour. So this is my drawing. I kind of copy and paste it there of the cell. So your cell should look um, plasmalized with the cell membrane pulling away from the cell wall, right? Experiment already, right? And you should remember that there was a higher concentration of water molecules in the cell and a lower concentration of water molecule in the salt solution. So water is going to move out of the cell, right? So that's it. So you could go ahead and label it right there. I already provided the drawing, so... You should be able to do that. So, all right. C says if all the cells in a plant appear like this one drawn in B on page 7, ability to photosynthesize will be reduced. And they're asking us to explain why photosynthesis will be reduced. Well, we could comment on two things. It's two marks. So we could be brief and we could comment on the fact that there would be a reduced diffusion of carbon dioxide in the metabolical processes in the chloroplast because the cell membrane is pulled away and we could comment that water is moving out of the cell right and it's actually needed in the cell specifically in the chloroplast for the light reactions so those are the two points that you could use and then d says 
Complete the table below to show three differences between plant and animal cells. Let's start with the vacuole. In plant cell, you would have one large vacuole. And in animal cell, you would have more than one small vacuoles. Let's move over to the chloroplast. They're present in the plant cells, but in the animal cell, they are absent. Cell wall, same thing again. Only plant cell have a cellulose cell wall. The animal cell has a cell membrane. And that's three mark there. That should cover it. All right, so we are looking at the... We're looking at the 2011 CAPE paper, and this is a pictomitograph of the cross-section of a typical dicot leaf, and they're asking us to identify A, B, C, and D. All right, here are my answers. A is the upper epidermis. B is the palisade tissue. C looks like the xylem, um, not the vascular bundle that looks solely like the xylem. And D would be the stomata. All right. And this one is the CAPE 2008 paper. And it says chloroplasts are involved in energy conversion in plants and share some features in common with mitochondria. And it first asks us to state two structural features, keyword there, structural, which are similar. And one structural feature, which is different in chloroplast and mitochondria. So let's start with the similarities here. We could comment, it's two marks, so we could just comment on the fact that both have their own DNA and both are enclosed by two membranes. And they ask us for one difference and it's one mark. We could comment on any of the following. You could start with the shape. I mean, the mitochondria is being shaped and the chloroplast is disc shaped. You could comment on the chamber, which you could say that the mitochondria have two chambers, which are the matrix and the cristae. And you could comment on the chloroplast that they have two chambers, which are the stroma and the thylakoid. And you could also comment on the inner membrane structure, right? The inner membrane of the mitochondria is folded into cristae. The inner membrane of the chloroplast rises into the thylakoids. Right? So you could use any one of those three. Okay, so we're going to move over to Cape 2006. And it says, figure five shows a student's drawing of a plant cell as seen from an electron micrograph. Now, this is not specifically related to photosynthesis, but I saw it and I said it would be cool because we're talking about plants. Right? And what the question asks us to do is to complete the labeling of the student's drawing by writing in the spaces provided the name of each part of the cell identified by the lines. So basically, it's asking us to label it, right? So let's start. All right, let's start at the bottom. So the first structure there is the mitochondria. And why I stated that this was the mitochondria was because of the obvious fold in the inner membrane, right? The Christi. There is pretty clear. The second one would be a piece of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. I don't know. It was giving me a bit of a problem there, but it couldn't be microtubule or actin filament. So this would have to be smooth ER. Let's move over to three and four. The entire structure is the chloroplast, right? And the outer part here, the top is the stroma. And these here are the thylakoids. Above that, we have the cell membrane because it's inner. The out, if it was outer, we would say it would be the cell wall. And then above it, you could find the cytoplasm because that's not really directly pointing towards anything. And it could not be the cell membrane they're talking about. And the other two structures would be the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus, respectively. All right, we're still on Cape 2006 now. And we're looking at the electron micrograph of a organelle. That's what they said, but this is actually the chloroplast. Right, and we should describe two function of the organelle shown here. From the video just now, you could basically comment on the fact that the chloroplast is important in the light dependent stages, the light independent stages, because both the stroma and the thylakoids play an active role in achieving photosynthesis. And that's two marks, so you really don't have to spend a lot of time expounding, just ensure that you have those key points. And then D says, name two organelles or cellular structures present in animal cells but absent from plant cells 
it's one mark so you could either choose between chromosomes lysosomes and cilia so any one of those two out of the three this is the cape 2006 paper and number one a says name the major pigment and one accessory pigment used by plants in photosynthesis the main one is chlorophyll a and you guys are k biology students so step up from the c set biology life and be specific so this one is chlorophyll a and not just chlorophyll right and the accessory pigments would be carotenoids and xanthophylls any one of those you could choose b says state the wavelengths of light absorbed by photosystem one and two so from the video we could conclude that photosystem one is 700 nanometers and photosystem two is 680 nanometers all right for the next question we need to observe what's going on here in figure one it's actually showing how electrons are transported through photosystem one and two in the light dependent stage of photosynthesis and it says identify the photosystems labeled at boxes one and two so let's look at box one and two so from the video remember photosystem two is at a lower wavelength of 680 and photosystem one is at a higher wavelength of 700 nanometer so we could say that box one is photosystem two and box two is photosystem one then part two says briefly explain a two events caused by incident light at reaction center one let's look back at one the one is showing us photosystem two well we could comment on the fact that when there is a photon coming in from the sun and it ex excites the chlorophyll molecule we have electrons going to a higher state and being accepted by their electron acceptor and then because it's moving from one state to another we need to replace that one so we could say that there's also the splitting of water molecule to replace the electron in the form of the hydrogen um, electron there and then b says why electrons enter box one i think we already answered that and then v says identify the substances in box six seven and eight and then six would be the hydrogen plus that would react with the nadp to form nadph and box seven would be nadph and box eight would be the atp formed there and the last part says we should state which substance either an electron or an ion which one is stored in the thylakoid space i would say it would be the hydrogen ion because remember um when there is a flow of electron from the electron transport chain then hydrogen ions are pumped into the thylakoid space from the stroma thanks for watching guys and remember to subscribe to my channel and share to another science student who is in need of help I'm available on Instagram at the genius JA or visit my website at learnwithdisha.com. Thank you.